Well, as you've already seen, I'm calling this video some of this and a little of that, just because it's an odd collection of things. It doesn't really seem to follow any great theme. I have harvested, well, I guess these are the two and three of my uh, cantaloupes. There's only one left of it in the, in the hoop house. I have already eaten one, and it was delicious, but I decided I would uh, cut one and show you what the early champ short season cantaloupe looks like when you cut it open. I'm going to cut this one even though it has something happening here. There's a small hole. I don't know if somebody has gone in there or if somebody has come out. But I'm trying to save this one because I've, I've promised a, a cantaloupe to a friend. So I'll have a look at this and see what's inside anyway. I don't see any damage. Of course the hole is down there. But this is the same as it was the first one, the one that I've already eaten, I was amazed at the uh, ratio of flesh to seeds. There's a, there's a thick area of flesh and uh, just a small area of seed in the middle. I, I don't know, it seems to me when I buy the whatever variety it is, it is that you buy in stores, there seems to be a great deal more seed. But then again, these are a, are a small cantaloupe. much it for seeds and the rest of it is delicious cantaloupe. Mm. And that is delicious. Very good. Well, carry on the next clip here. I think I'm going to uh, pick that uh, large red ripe sweet pepper and, uh, and roast it. Well, that's the fat and sassy sweet uh, bell pepper that I showed you in my last video that was starting to ripen. And it's 90% or 95% ripe. There's still a little bit of green on it, but I'm scared of leaving it out there and finding that it has spoiled. There's not much time between a ripe sweet pepper and one that's starting to spoil. They go over very quickly, so I want to roast this. Uh, I like them roasted and then in, stored in some um, olive oil and uh, garlic. They don't last very long once I do that. But anyway, I'll show you the process that I use for, for roasting a sweet pepper. Sorry for all the racket, but I have to have the range hood going or my smoke detector will take off on me here. It's been on this gas flame now for a few minutes. And as you can see, it's starting to do some charring. But the idea is to char as much of the outside skin as possible. And then I'll show you what I do to remove the outside skin. The resulting pepper is just soft and nicely roasted. And it doesn't really have a burnt flavor at all. I'll bring you back in a minute or two here after it's done some more charring. It's almost ready. I'll turn it a couple of more times and then I'll show you what I do to start removing the charred skin. Well, now it has almost completely charred or roasted, whatever term you want to use here. You put it in a, I use a Ziploc bag, but any kind of a plastic bag that you can seal. These are a nice large Ziploc bag. You to get this size you have to get them from a, a restaurant supply company and as you can see it's already steamed up the inside of the bag you leave it in there until the pepper is completely cooled and the steam coming out of the pepper loosens all of that skin that you've roasted on the outside and it should, as in the past anyway, remove easily under running water. But anyway, I'll show you that process. Probably it'll be a half hour or an hour from now before it's completely cooled. I always seem to have a noise in the background. This time it's running water. It 
you can see, the charred skin comes off relatively easy. Very cold running water. I'll keep at this until I get it all done and then I'll come back and show you what I do next. I took the back of a knife and removed some of the more difficult charred pieces. I think I got most of it off there. The next thing you have to do is cut it open and remove whatever seeds might happen to be inside. surprised with these peppers for some reason very few <laughs> seeds like this has got maybe two or three seeds instead of that big sponge of seed that you usually see I don't know what that means but that's what this variety is doing anyway and this is the green area that uh, hadn't completely ripened I'll slice this up and come back ready to put it in the olive oil mixture well, that's a completed dish, cut up into strips and then cut in half so they would fit in this little container with some uh, slices of garlic and some extra virgin olive oil. Very good. I love this stuff in sandwiches with a salad or just served with anything. I like to let it uh, marinate at room temperature for a few hours before I refrigerate it, but then I don't seem to have any problem with keeping it for a week or two in the fridge. Well, next I'm going to try some tempura batter along with my shishito peppers. Well, I'm making the tempura batter, which really isn't all that difficult. It requires one egg, mine of course, complete with shells in here. There we go. Mine of course is fresh from the coop. And the important ingredient is water, ice cold water. I mean, you probably can't quite see that, but uh, that is, there's ice floating in that water. One cup of ice water. Mix the egg, mix the ice water. And one cup of sifted all-purpose flour. And that is really it. And you don't want to whisk until smooth. The batter is supposed to be lumpy. A bit on the lumpy side. And I guess that will show there. Tempura batter all done. I have a fire going out on the rocket stove. We'll see if we can't cook some shishito peppers and also some pole beans. I canned my pole beans a week or so ago, but the vines are still producing, so I've added a few pole beans. Well, I've got a bit of a better fire in the wok this time. Using smaller pieces of wood seems to produce a better fire. This is just canola cooking oil. I'm not going to really add enough to do deep frying, just enough to hopefully cook them. And the oil is heating up. Add a few more sticks here to Stoke the fire really good. Looking kind of dark in this video, it's because well, it is early evening, it's about 7 p.m., but it's just starting to cloud up. We are supposed to be getting the tail end of Hurricane Isaac tomorrow. Um, not any great amount of wind, I don't think, but we are supposed to be getting 
upwards of two inches of rain. So we'll see what Isaac does for us tomorrow, I guess. Oh, yeah. Seems to be hot enough to do some drying there. The red pepper is also a shishito. Just when it's gone right. That's all. And I don't want to overcrowd it if I haven't already. back and show you what that looks like after I've drained it on some paper towel and set it up with the rest of my dinner here. Well, I'm really losing the light here now but they fried up quite nicely. The only thing I have done is I have seasoned them with a little sea salt and they're delicious. I have enough to do a, a second portion which I probably will do. And that's a piece of uh, steamed wild Pacific salmon and some of the roasted peppers that I did earlier today. Well, thank you very much for watching. I'll put this little hodgepodge of videos up on the internet.